quiz time. With the school year rapidly coming to a close, it would seem that right now would be an excellent time for all of us to participate in that familiar and much anticipated rite of spring examinations. We trust you have studied diligently. Our test today will be on the Old Testament, more specifically, the book of Genesis. Now, there's just one question on this test, so your grade for this entire year depends on your answer. Fortunately, it is a multiple choice question. Good luck. Let us begin. In chapter 3 of Genesis, in response to Adam and Eve's disobedience, God curses, is it A, the serpent, B, mankind, C, the earth, D, all of the above, E, a and B, or F, none of the above. Have you made your selection? Time's up. If you selected F, then I'm afraid that's also your grade on this test. The correct answer is D, all of the above. I'm sure most all of you knew about God's sentence on the sneaky snake and the future offspring of Adam and Eve, but the earth? Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. Cursed is the ground. Now, previously, the earth had given Adam and Eve all that they needed. Now, we must toil and work the earth if we are to eat, have water to drink, and shelter from the storms. So we've cut into the earth with picks, plows, and bulldozers. Forests continue to be stripped of trees, scattering the wildlife that had once lived there. No wonder the Apostle Paul talked about the earth groaning. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. That's from Paul's letter to the Romans part of which is our scripture for today. Did you groan when I announced we were having a quiz today? We'll be talking more about groaning later on in today's service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome to the online worship service of Robinson Memorial Presbyterian Church in Gastonia, North Carolina for Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. Today is a special day on the church calendar, Pentecost. Now, Pentecost predates the existence of the Christian church. It was a Jewish observance that came 50 days following Passover. At Passover, the ancient city of Jerusalem would be crowded with visitors, but the weather wasn't always good for traveling at that time of the year. Some 50 days later, the weather would be much better, just like it is here. 
So Jerusalem would have been even more crowded at Pentecost. Among those in the city 10 days after Christ ascended into heaven were his followers, huddled behind closed doors, hiding from the world. For a second time, they felt abandoned by Jesus, but he had promised to send them the Spirit to remind them of everything he said and did, filling them not only with knowledge, but with the Spirit itself. The church was born on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit brought about this birth. And it is the Holy Spirit that sustains the church all these centuries later. So today, we celebrate a birthday. Happy Pentecost. And what's a birthday party without a meal? Today, We'll be feasting at the Lord's table as we celebrate Holy Communion. We invite you to join us at the table from wherever you might be. You'll want to have ready your bread and drink, such as wine or juice from other fruits of the vine. Then, later on in this service, you can partake of these elements as we do. By the way, birthday cake is completely acceptable for today's communion. As you probably already know, Robinson Memorial is now conducting live in-person worship services in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. each Sunday. We ask that anyone who has not been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 wear a face mask and properly distance. And even if you are vaccinated, you are more than welcome to continue wearing your mask while inside the church. It's also quite an advantage if you're running late and didn't have time to brush your teeth before coming to church. If you can't make it to our Sunday morning service in person, we'll still be here on your screens starting at noon. So keep on watching, won't you? For now, though, it's time to kick off this party, um, I mean, worship service. Won't you join us in our responsive call to worship? The words will be on your screen. O Lord, how manifold are your works! The earth is full of your creatures. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to you, O God, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Let us worship God. Though the earth may groan, it is still holy, set apart by God. For our opening hymn today, we'll be singing Holy Ground.
This is true repentance, sincerely turning to God and all good and earnestly turning away from the devil and all evil. With that in mind, let us join in our unison prayer of confession. O oh God, like bones in the desert, our faith is dried up and lifeless. The winds of false doctrine sear our spirit. The heat of conflict saps our strength. We seek an oasis to escape your judgment. We wander aimlessly in search of direction. Have mercy upon us and fill us anew with your spirit. Give us counsel and guidance and forgive us our waywardness. As you have called us to be your people, O oh God, so breathe into us your spirit that we may witness to your love by the way we live our lives and the concern we show for others. And all God's people said, Amen. The prophet Joel declares that in the last days, God's Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. All it shall be that whoever calls on God shall be saved. Know that as you call on God's name, Christ intercedes on your behalf to deliver you in His righteousness, blameless before God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Our first scripture reading for today comes to us from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Listen now for the word of our Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated, and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phyresia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, 
What does this mean? Our second reading for today comes us from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Fun fact. Did you know that Australia's main export is boomerangs? It's also their biggest import. What did the duck say to the store clerk when she bought some lipstick? Put it on my bill. Scientists recently discovered those tiny ants that ruin your picnics and get in your pantries never get sick. Apparently, they have too many antibodies. Corny jokes that are so bad that they're actually funny are often referred to as groaners. They make you laugh and groan. Our Merriam-Webster tells us that to groan is to utter a deep moan indicative of pain, grief, or annoyance, or to make a harsh sound under sudden or prolonged strain. She groaned when she looked at the bill from her veterinarian. The chair groaned under the weight of the 500-pound man. While groaners are funny, groaning is far from pleasant. Not only is the person who groans most likely unhappy, but generally the people around the groaner are, at the least, annoyed. Quit your groaning already. We're tired of hearing about it. Come to think of it, guess that's also groaning, isn't it? In our passage today from Paul's letter to the Romans, we find the apostle writing about groaning three times in six verses. All of creation groans. We groan. The Holy Spirit groans. Three groans, but each of these groans has a different context. All groans are not made equal. Earlier in the service, we talked about the earth groaning. I think all of creation has a right to groan. God cursed the earth for something the earth didn't do. It was Adam, Eve, and the serpent that caused the mess, introducing inescapable sin into the world. Animals didn't sin. Trees didn't sin. 
the ground we walk on didn't sin, yet all were cursed, groaning as a woman experiencing child labor that never ends. Creation itself knows this is not what God intended. Unlike us, the world has suffered ever since the Garden of Eden. Our suffering is temporary, a blink of the eye by comparison. So what do we have to groan about? When we get hungry, we go to the grocery store or find a restaurant. Most all of us don't toil in the fields to grow our own food. When we need shelter, we don't fashion our own log cabins. We buy or rent a home. Compared to our ancestors, we have it pretty good. So why do we groan? Paul declares followers of Christ groan inwardly. Yes, we who have tasted the first fruits of God's coming into the world groan. An imperfect comparison would be taking a bite out of the first ripe strawberry in the field. It is so good. But None of the other berries are ripe yet. No matter how much you want another strawberry ripe then, you have to wait. And you groan thinking about it. But you know, other berries will ripen soon. So at least you have hope. But that hope can be dashed easily. A tornado rips through the field. A drought takes hold at the same time the irrigation system fails, leaving the crop to wither on the vines. That's part of the uncertainties of a groaning creation. But that's not the groaning Paul says we do. We groan because we have had a taste of Christ in our lives, but just a taste. We hope not for earthly things, but for our complete adoption as brothers and sisters of Christ. Ultimately, that's what we hope for. We don't know right now what that will look like how it will manifest. But Paul reminds us that true hope lies in what we can't see. We can't see God. We can't see what Jesus has become. But we know it is good. We know it is assured that this hope is not grounded of this world. The fruition of this hope cannot be controlled by mankind or all of creation. It's out of our hands. So we groan inwardly, while at the same time having complete trust in God, knowing what He did for us through Christ. The source of the third groaning Paul writes about may come as a bit of a surprise, the Holy Spirit. The Apostle wrote, The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Ever have difficulty knowing what to say to God? whether in a moment of crisis or gladness, our brains oftentimes have trouble translating our feelings into actual words. Many people, I dare say, avoid at all costs having to pray aloud in a group. 
I don't know what to say. I don't know the correct words to use. Perhaps we are describing you. Don't worry. We've all been there. It can be daunting, considering who we're talking to in prayer. Yet, Paul tells us we have the benefit of a holy translator, the Spirit. The Spirit that is unseen, but both in us and around us. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Paul writes here in what kind of approach is a Trinitarian confession? Now, as one part of the Godhead, the Spirit is how we communicate with God. It might just sound like meaningless groaning to us, but we know the message not only gets through, but is understood by God. This same Spirit, the one that came into that house in Jerusalem on Pentecost, that's what makes it possible for us today to communicate with God in spite of our sins. At that particular Pentecost, what appeared to be tongues of fire over the heads of the disciples allowed each to speak in foreign languages so all who were there could hear their praises of God, regardless of their native tongues. If we accept the telling of this event as an article of the Christian faith, then most certainly we can accept that it is through the Holy Spirit's groaning that today we communicate with God regardless of the language we speak or the words we choose. So, at least in this sense, let us thank God for groaning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds for communion, let us sing together, I will remember thee, as actually provides the music.
wind of the Spirit blow through us and your whole church on this day of Pentecost. Blow through us and renew our faith. Reawaken our love for God. Let your flames warm our hearts with trust in Jesus Christ and dare us to do great things in His name. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and renew our faith. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. And all who believe have a seat at this table. This is not the table of Robinson Memorial or even the Presbyterian Church USA. This is God's table. And there is room and nourishment for all who confess Christ as their Lord. People will come from east and west, north and south, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. All of this is a gift from God. Let us give thanks in prayer to God, beginning with the words that will appear on your screen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us new understanding. With the majesty of your hand, you shape this world and all that is in it. By your Holy Spirit, you breathed life into human form and set us on the earth to praise and serve you. When we wandered from your ways and were lost in sin's wilderness, your truth burned in the hearts of prophets who called your people to return to the path of righteousness. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son to be our deliverer. In every age, your Holy Spirit has led us in your ways. Therefore, we praise you. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and Give us energy to serve you as the body of Christ working in the world. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. At his baptism by John, your spirit came with gentle wings, settling on him your blessing. In the wilderness of temptation, your spirit stood by with power. In his life and ministry, your spirit led him to serve the poor, proclaim freedom from sin's bondage, open eyes with faith's sight, and befriend the friendless and the outcast. Wind of the spirit blow through us and bring healing for all who face pain or illness, discouragement or disappointment, that no sorrow, sadness, or grief. Lord, there are many hurting in the world today from all sorts of causes. Be with them all. Bring them the Spirit. Today we lift up in prayer those known to us in need of your care and comfort. We pray for Jerry and for Jean, for Johnny and Sandy. Our prayers for Larry and David and Beverly. Continuing 
with our prayers for Adrian and Alan. We lift up to you Emma and Claudette, Leanne and Rick, Pat Button, Joyce and Chris. Our prayers for Gary and Ellen, for Nancy and Ashley, for Mary and Lee, for Mitchell, for Barbara, for Vinny, for Kennedy and for Michaela. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. And now we pray together the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. Saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. By the fire of your Spirit, O God, forge us into one church 
many and different people together in Christ's embrace. Set our hearts aflame with a, a love for truth and the desire to do your will, that our witness to Christ may burn brightly in lives of joyful discipleship. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, let us say together what we believe by using the words of the Nicene Creed. Those words will appear on your screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. and We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin to close out this service, let us sing together the hymn, Spirit of the Living God. Please, sing along and be filled with the Holy Spirit.
melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Thank you for joining us today for our Pentecost celebration. If the Spirit so moves you, don't forget to help support this ministry and mission through your gifts, tithes, and offerings. You can drop them by, mail them in, or now even go online. We'll have the information on your screen shortly. Also, don't forget to share this worship service widely. Sow as many seeds over as large an area as possible. Now, if we don't see you in person, we'll see you right here next Sunday. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and give you His peace now and forevermore. Amen.